I'd like to welcome everybody to Wednesday, October 27th, 2021, Public Safety Committee meeting. Do we have a roll call, Kelly? Chairman Lockmiller? Here. Alderman Plufka? Here. Alderwoman O'Neill? Here. Alderwoman Sims? Here. All members present. Uh, move on to approval of the agenda. If we could, if there's no changes, can we do that by acclamation? All in favor say aye. 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 Shall be done. Move right into citizen comments. Kelly, is there anybody out there? We the have an attendee, but uh, no hand raised at this point. Uh, we'll have another, I believe we do. Yeah, we'll have another uh, time for citizen comment towards the end of the meeting, if you'd like to make a comment then. Move on to city administrator report. Bola, anything? Nothing, thank you. All right. Reports of chairs and chairmen. Um, I just have two things. One, uh, Chief Mike, Condolences to a fellow officer that fell at Pontoon Beach. I guess last name, Officer Timmons, and uh, our condolences go out to him and his family. Um, the other issue is next month's meeting is on the twenty or the day before Thanksgiving, but I think we were going to kind of look for a new time to meet, but there we may end up canceling that meeting. So just. Stay tuned and I'll let you know at a board meeting what we're gonna decide to do there. Uh, other committee reports, or committee personnel report, uh, Alderman Plufka. Done, nothing. Alderman O'Neill. No report. Alderman Sims. No report. Moving to department reports, police department. Chief Spies. Got for us. Good afternoon, everyone. This yeah. is on. This on? This on? Okay. Um, I was going to start, sir, with the crime report. Um, there may have been some incidences over the, the three week or so period that we've just covered that uh, may have caught your attention when you saw the weekly reports for crime. Um, we've had, generally speaking, crime's been down uh, compared to last year, in particular at this uh, same time frame. However, uh, the, the thefts we're having from vehicles are occurring mostly in our garages and, and retail areas, as usual. Uh, luckily, uh, most, most of this is not occurring in our neighborhoods. Um, having said that, uh, we've had during this period, including the magic bus the other day, we've had three incidents of catalytic converters stolen at night. So we are not alone in that. Uh, they are hitting literally all over the area, just like, and it's, it's not the same guys that are doing car crime where they're breaking into cars and, and stealing cars. Those are two different people. So the catalytic converter folks are, are busy as well at night. They all run at night. So uh, 2,500 Brentwood and then the, of course our rec center and then an uh, address down on Manchester where the places those were hit. You may have seen a, uh, a unlawful useful weapon, a shooting that was on the report that occurred on uh, the 10th of October and it occurred at the Home Depot. Um, it was kind of a strange case. Guy gets into an altercation on the parking lot uh, as he's walking into the Home Depot with a guy in a truck. And for some reason, the guy in the truck fires a shot at him. The victim didn't even know it until we looked at the video surveillance and uh, the detective were able to figure the case out. Uh, unfortunately, the victim didn't want to prosecute. Um, so at any rate, if you saw that on their sheet, that's what that was about. We had a sexual misconduct on here that involved one of the... Um, ride shares or, or ride hire companies. Um, and it's also kind of a strange case. It, it's on your sheet as a sexual misconduct. It was a young gal that was picked up by a driver uh, and he did some uh, real inappropriate stuff while she was in the front seat with him. Uh, that was investigated. He was arrested by our detectives. So uh, I don't think he works for that company anymore. He was, uh, there's a way to report those drivers for improper conduct and that's been done as well. Um, we had a burglary on the sheet that ended up being a uh, nice job by Brian Hoppler. Officer Hoppler was able to figure out who this was. As it ends up, it's a, a homeless uh, gal who came into the building uh, at 1600 Brentwood, uh, the high rise there and she went on the eighth floor and went into an office area and she kind of kicked the door open uh, looking for a bathroom and trying to steal something. I probably, she didn't take anything, but uh, if you saw that burglary case, that's what that was from. She has been taken into custody. Um, we had reports from Metro Lighting of some guys that, at night that were roaming their lots. Uh, Todd Lambert, Corporal Lambert, was able to find that truck 
uh, identified those two guys. And about three weeks later, the same truck was listed as a description on, on your sheet at um, Hoffman Brothers again, where they uh, broke into a truck, stole some tools and things like that. So those guys are, are both out wanted. We know who they are because of Todd Lambert's stop three weeks prior. Um, but Hoffman Brothers is, has been a, a regular target at night for the thieves. And I don't know if you, if you know the owners of the company, they're real supportive of the city and they're, they're good people. And we, we're working to try and help them with um, some additional cameras and things like that on their lots and, and extra patrol. Um, I think that's it. Did anybody have any questions regarding the, the, the crime stuff that's been going on? Questions for the chief? For my own edification, why are catalytic converters the subject of theft? So in, in recent, what seems to be in recent times for me, I just, yeah. I don't know anything about cars. Metals. It, it's metals. actually not recent. It's been going on for a lot of years. There are um, precious metals inside catalytic converters and that's what they're after. Um, you know, we have been trying to uh, crack down on the, first it was copper out of your house. They were ripping pipes out of your house, not your house, but houses. Um, and now the catalytic converters are more popular because they get more money from these precious metals inside the catalytic converters. So, um, and of course they have to have a place to take them in these resale shops for metals or where they're going. So uh, that's really the angle that law enforcement looks at is where, where are they ending up so that they can backtrack and figure out who's cashing them in. Uh, most of the other things, uh, sir, on the new and old business. So I'll be back unless you want to. Uh, you had the, uh... An update on the Flox cameras? Uh, yes, we, uh, <laughs> Flock has become very popular and they're, they're being spread all over the place. Um, unfortunately, their uh, manufacturer who has their solar powered unit on their cameras uh, cannot get their parts because of what's going on in the world today. And I, I, don't, I, I don't know where they come from, but so they send us a message saying that you're going to have to find an alternative source of power, especially in the winter, because sunlight hours are limited. Um, we, like we had Bo and I were talking about that. It's just that technology. I, I don't know what, what really to say about that. We still have an option to stay into the contract that we went into with it. We still have confidence in that, that they'd be very helpful. Uh, we have not gone live with the three cameras that are in yet in terms of our officers are, are still being trained just got the whole department trained on how to use these but thus far just those three cameras over the last about 10 days or so there's been three stolen cars that have come through those cameras that were notified that we got notified on and there were 25 cars where the license plates are listed as, as stolen and that's a real common deal where they're stealing a license plate off of somebody's car and putting it on a stolen car. So those are, those are cars that we would pay close attention to, particularly at night as well. So, and, and some of the value here is that we can back those cameras up and look in and identify cars and uh, be able to do the investigative piece on the back end of it. So th there's definitely value. We just need to figure out if we need to move them to a power source where there's electricity or can they figure out their supply chain and get the solar power back to us? So that was their update. Well, more to come then, huh? Hopefully. Any other questions for the chief at this time? All right, chief, we'll see you a little bit later. Move on to fire department. Chief Cottrell. Hey, good evening. Uh, my apologies for sending this out so late today, but I'll go over this update as brief as I can. Uh, last week, very successful week as far as fire training. Uh, I don't know if you know or not, but Mayor Dimmitt survived. Uh, he did quite well. So, yeah, it was a, it was a great experience. Um, again, quite well. Uh, I'd be stretching it a little bit, but he survived. <laughs> he, he did quite well. Yeah. <laughs> um, just our new training group with the inclusion of Richmond Heights and also with us doing it at the St. Louis uh, Fire Department training center um, they participated as well so uh, just great collaboration last week um, by all parties so as I state here in addition to that training um, in the last two weeks we've sent eight different folks to uh, advanced rescue training um, we continue just to invest in them and they're just seeking these opportunities uh, just to make Brentwood better in our capabilities so um, 
four individuals are finishing a, a special rescue program uh, tomorrow and Friday. Um, the group is coming out of Chicago to teach it. So just a, just a great opportunity. So we appreciate the support in our training funds. Um, we're moving along with our uh, strategic plan with our department. Um, we're sending notice out to our outside stakeholders, the business community and education uh, institutes uh, this week. And um, so we hope to just be collecting that data, processing it in November and uh, continue to towards completion after the first of the year. This next item does have me concerned um, somewhat with the, as reported, several um, media outlets, Spire and their pipeline that they've been um, told they have to shut down due to improper or not the proper permits. They have a hard stop date now where they're facing to shut this pipeline down. Um, they're very concerned. What are the temps going to be at this date in December? I believe it's December 12th or 13th. It's all bearing on what are the temps going to be. If it's below freezing, they feel like they have maybe two weeks reserve available for their customers. Um, if it's above freezing, they have a little bit longer. Their plan is to prioritize who gets to keep gas service, hospitals, nursing homes. Residents are low on that, that priority list. Um, last, oh, I apologize, two weeks ago, they um, brought in St. Louis County Office of Emergency Management. They are developing a plan. Um, what are we gonna do moving forward if this does get shut down? As fire chiefs, we met uh, two weeks ago. We're very concerned. Alternative heating, um, cooking methods, we just don't know, which could lead to carbon monoxide issues. There's, it's just peeling an onion. There's layer after layer. So we're working with St. Louis County. Um, communication is open. We're very hopeful that somehow they'll get to continue the use of the pipeline. But as of right now, it's shutting down in December. So they continue to fight, so. What's the area? I mean, is this the whole St. Louis area? It's not the entire St. Louis area, but it certainly covers Brentwood. Okay. Yes. Um, they do have a link on their website um, that gives somewhat of an overview of their service area that will be affected. Um, but this, this region of St. Louis County is directly affected as well as the hospitals up and down Highway 40. So that, that's that's a, a big concern of ours. What would be the duration of this shutdown? Until they receive the proper permit. Yeah. Where exactly is the pipeline? I, I can't answer that exactly. I know it comes from Illinois up towards North St. Louis County, but I, I don't know the exact location. Correct. So uh, they have some supply, reserve supply, um, but their other sources for natural gas cannot provide supply to, throughout the entire service area. I, I'll keep you posted if anything changes in November. I'll, I'll certainly send communication out. Uh, we did receive approval this week from the state of Missouri uh, to begin testing our employees for uh, COVID. And so with the new um, vaccination mandate uh, by the city, we will be able to test those that have an exemption or those that are symptomatic um, for illness. We have some training to do, but th this is at no cost to the city. So that's important to, to share. And then the, the last piece, um, today I started the uh, process for a capital expenditure on fire station alerting. We brought this forward several times. So St. Louis County has agreed to enter a contract to purchase the bulk of this equipment. So per fire station in St. Louis County, um, it's around $29,000 per station that they are funding. Um, I am submitting a request to submit payment to East Central Dispatch. They're gonna handle the deployment to all the departments that they dispatch for because it is, directly tied to their new CAD that they are working on right now. 
So it's the project has started, but it will not be completed till after the first of the year, probably mid year next year. So the $10,000 that we have budgeted in our capital funds this year will pay for the necessary upgrades in our station to accommodate this fire station alerting. So I wanted to share that. That's great news from St. Louis County. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to Dan with Public Works Department. Any report, Dan? Uh, the uh, speed cushions that we ordered for Pine Avenue, there's two of those, and that would be between uh, High School Drive and Brentwood Boulevard. The uh, supply chain has caused it to be delayed. It was originally supposed to be the end of September. Then when I called closer to the end of September, it was beginning of October, then the middle. Now, lately, when I called uh, last week, they said it would be targeted for next week. So fingers crossed it would be here the first part of November. And then it's not really temperature dependent. We can get that anchored in. I just would like to get it done before the snowflakes fall. So hopefully we'll get that in in November and we'll bring, it'll be in the weekly report whenever we put it in and we'll bring it back here whenever it's done. So that's it. Dan. Thanks. Done. Thank you, Dan. Move on to the consent agenda. We have the minutes uh, from the July meeting. Um, can we also approve that by acclamation? And that will be done by acclamation. Move on to old business. I guess, Chief Speece, you're back up for security camera ordinance. Sir, if I could just for a second, uh, Bola asked that I touch on the budget for the police department for 2021, where we are. Okay. Uh, as of two days ago, we are 28% uh, under what was projected to be spent this year. But there are a couple categories we're over in. One is uniform purchases uh, with the hire of uh, Tim Lockenick and a couple of our officers this year. We went over on what was projected um, for uniform purchases for new officers. Um, the second one that uh, we are over in is fuel. I think that one's pretty obvious with the cost of gas being what it is today. Um, there's, uh, we are a little over in salaries part-time and what that is is um, this is a budget category that allows for supervisors to be paid when they step in in place of others that uh, are out. Sergeant Matt Morgan had triple bypass surgery about two and a half months ago. He's been gone uh, since then, obviously. So. Uh, those that have been filling in as, as uh, frontline supervisors behind Matt, um, we didn't expect that coming, obviously, so that we're a little over in that. The last category is overtime, and that's um, about 16% over. Uh, we took a big hit on the uh, overtime budget this year and the homicide investigation that occurred in the summer. Uh, at this point, all of the, any hours that our officers are working are, are, are not going out as money. They're going in as comp time. So... Um, that, that's where we are on the, the budget. So uh, with regard to the old business uh, category that, that um, is on the agenda for tonight, that was your request, Alderman Lockmiller, regarding a potential security camera ordinance for Brentwood that would require, potentially require businesses with 25 parking spaces and more to have be required to have security camera coverage of their lots. Uh, we, uh, the police department created a um, potential ordinance, although we're not lawyers, so it was not perhaps exactly written as a lawyer may. So we passed it to Kevin O'Keefe per BOLA. And uh, at this point, Kevin, and I think he's been off for a vacation for a he's while. He's working so. on it, but he's he's off for, I think, the next mm -hmm. two weeks or so. So that's why we don't have the ordinance for you. But we did meet with Chief Spees, Major Hawkins, Major McIntyre, to discuss how best to prepare that ordinance. So it will be forthcoming. A related note on that, uh, the city police department sent out a message to a bunch of municipality um, departments to have a meeting regarding their real-time crime center, which if you don't, aren't aware of what that does, it's a, it's a uh, very uh, well-built ornate system where officers can watch cameras in the city. They wanna partner with us and with the municipalities that, that are border near the city. Unfortunately, at this point, Brentwood doesn't really have many cameras to, to give them to be able to view if we even chose to do that. They have to be on a Genetech platform, which is the platform that uh, the Real-Time Crime Center can watch. So 
as we look at the ordinance that's on this old business, um, it actually would be a, a really, really great fit for us. We would have the opportunity to partner with the city, have officers actually engage watching both our LPR cameras and, uh, for example, the jury in lot, if they had cameras. Uh, if something was happening on the jury in lot, we would have immediate eyes on that, that lot through those cameras through the real-time crime center if we went into an agreement with them down the road, obviously, but it just, I mention it because this ordinance could be a really nice fit with that if, if we got that far. Any questions regarding the ordinance? Oh. Um, I, I have a question given what you just said, which I think is fascinating and great. However, the city, the Board of Aldermen has authorized the flock cameras. That's not on the Genetech. They but we, we want them all to be on the same system. So how do we go about maybe backstepping to to accomplish that? The, the flock cameras are, are they are um, they don't have a back system behind them. They're all uh, in the cloud. So which was one of the values of that flock system as we looked at it. Yeah, uh, because it cuts down on the cost. Oh. Uh, that doesn't mean, though, that eventually the real-time crime, they can look at other cameras. It's just that they don't want to federate uh, different systems into their, mm -hmm. because they have to pull up different screens all the time to do that. Uh, however, it doesn't mean Clayton's gone on board with Flock. I think Richmond Heights is buying them. We are, that doesn't mean that if we had an agreement with them that they wouldn't agree to look at those, especially if it's an LPR hit. Okay. So... I just had a question. Uh, has there been any interaction with some of the stakeholders, some of the businesses about this type of an ordinance? No, I was, I was kind of hoping to have uh, Kevin O'Keefe's um, draft to you guys and have you take a look at it. And at that point, if, if the four of you think there's interest, we would certainly be willing to do that. I, I kind of felt like it wasn't we'd be putting the cart for the horse until you guys got to look at it. So. Then what's, um, <clears throat> is the business, it says in here something where the, I guess the department would be able to, or, or the business would be required to share the video. And again, this ordinance can be written any way that you want it to be written. Um, there are ordinances that require that, um, you know, sometimes people are different when it goes to sharing this video with law enforcement. Um, we just had a case this week at a bank, uh, they wouldn't turn over their video surveillance to us without a subpoena. They don't need a subpoena to turn, this is, they don't need a subpoena to do that, but they are abundantly cautious. So if we put the uh, caveat in that ordinance that they're required to do it, then that, that would relieve, relieve them of that responsibility if they thought they had it. And these cameras aren't necessarily 24 hour monitor that they're just no. recording. Right. Does that give anybody, say I'm running through a, or walking through a garage, does that give me a false sense of security thinking that somebody's got their eyes on me that I mean, there's I'm a lot safe, of, more safe than I really am? There's a lot of studies that these cameras are, are good deterrents, that they don't stop everything. There's still people doing crime in front of a camera for sure. Um, but they are a good, they are a strong deterrent. Um, what you don't want to do is put signage up that indicates they're being actively monitored. That, that's not something you want to do in terms of your signage. But um, if we get to the point where these businesses come online with cameras, there's a good opportunity that the, that the police department would be able to chime into those cameras in real time. So as an example, if we have a car that goes through our flock cameras and it's an LPR hit on Eager Road and Target and Deerbergs and, and the MetroLink platforms had cameras, the officers working could pull those cameras up and look for that car. Act, that's how the city does this. They actively can follow and track a vehicle in the real-time crime center. In, the, in Brentwood, in this, this retail area that we have, we could do the same thing. If, if the retail areas had cameras, we could physically track that car as it moves around, probably breaking into cars. As it goes into a garage, for example, they should be able to see it. And I've seen this work repeatedly in the city with their cameras, but their cameras, they have 40,000 cameras to pull it throughout St. Louis that businesses are sharing with them and, and cameras that the city has purchased. 
So theirs is, is very robust at this point. It's getting bigger. Ours would be, you know, it, a lot of the focus would be around our retail area. Okay, thanks, Chief. Yes, we'll sir. wait to see what you come up with. Moving on to new business, we have, uh, Dan, I think you're up with this one. This was a request I had by a, a resident in the ward who lives right behind uh, Carl's and is getting parking tickets because he can't park in front of his house. Right. Yeah, I'm not really sure when this uh, ordinance was put in place for no parking, but it's been there a while. I know the residents only lived there about four years, but I know this has been in place even longer when I spoke with some of our folks that have put signs up throughout here. And, you know, to their knowledge, it's been there for probably 15 plus years. So basically, if you read the uh, ordinance, some of it, it seems redundant. So it'll say, you know, no parking, high school drive, both sides from its intersection with Manchester, northwardly a distance of 150 feet. Then another one says high school drive, either side of that fork, since it splits and goes around the island from the north side of Manchester, northwardly along each of the forks for a distance of 275 feet. So it's even further. And then the last one is just high school, just the east side from a point 150 feet north of the north side of Manchester Road to a point 150 feet north of the north side of Match. So basically from Carl's all the way up that east fork uh, going northwardly, you can't park there even up to Madge and beyond. So this person is the house just as Alderman Lockman mentioned, just to the north of Carl's, the first residential home. It is a one car with driveway, but you can park multiple cars tandemly, you know, nose to back or vice versa, you could back in. Um, so it, to me, it looked like you'd fit probably like three cars, plus it has a garage that's under the home. It's just that it's inconvenient for the person that lives there. If the person that's parked closest to the house wants to leave first, you have to jockey the cars around. And I think what they do is they just park one in the street and then it didn't matter. You didn't have to move them around. But then recently they received a citation because they did park in an area that says, you know, no parking anytime. So the one thing to note though, is that part of the uh, MoDOT Route 100 improvements, which there's a snippet, I snipped from the uh, MoDOT drawings, um, that uh, entrance coming from Route 100 or Manchester Road for both high school, north and south, that's gonna be redone. And what that'll do is, you know, Carl's is going to uh, miss some parking on the Manchester Road side of their business. And that'll be a new sidewalk and a new curb cut on Manchester. Plus there's a new curb cut on High School Drive at the, what would it be, the Northern end of Carl's that butts this person's house. And then they'll actually have some on-street parking. It'll be angled parking spaces. So if we don't change it now, we're going to have to change the ordinance later to figure out like how many feet north of Manchester to allow parking because the folks that would be parking in those angled stalls, they shouldn't be getting tickets, but the way the current code is written, they would because that's still no parking from Manchester North. So two options you could do, you could try to change something now only to change it again later in a year or two whenever Manchester's redone. Um, I'm curious to see how Carl's lays out their lot, because if you look at it now where it's striped, that's actually gonna be a driveway where you would go in and out or be able to drive around the building. So they'll lose a few stalls on their lot. They've got a dumpster next to the building on the west side. So I don't know how their trash truck is gonna pick up that dumpster, even though there's gonna be parking near it. So I didn't know if we'd wait and see after these improvements are done and then modify it then, or if you didn't want to modify it at all, except for at Carl's, you know, we could do just Carl's or we could do Carl's plus the next house north, which in this case is this one at 2646 high school. Well, how will this change? Will it use the existing fork to the west and then the fork to the east will be eliminated? No, both uh, forks, you'll be able to go northbound from Manchester, the one closest to Carl's, and then the other fork, you would still be able to go onto Manchester Road, either make a right or make a left to go east or west. They're just kind of shifting it over, and that island that's currently there now is kind of getting neck down. Oh, so it'll still exist. It will still exist, yeah, just barely, a few feet. 
will the street go through then to the the incoming or will it just go to carl's parking no you'll still be able to go up and down uh, high school so if you turn to go northbound it wouldn't be that it just dead ends into carl's you're still able to go northbound towards madge and continue into brentwood all right i wasn't aware of that so to clarify we're going to have to make an or a change in the ordinance anyway for we certain can either do it now and and help this resident out with his parking issues right. and then modify it later if we have to or we can just wait and let him deal with it and then we do something later that's right. our choice so it seems as though we should do it now and help out the resident and if it doesn't work once the construction's done then we can tweak what's this take to get this off at this table number three i mean i don't know what the criteria is for a street being labeled table three or whatever you call it, 3a yeah no uh, parking anytime what's the criteria for that i mean this is a pretty wide street and this guy it is was, yeah, yeah what was the reason for the sign in the first place i guess that was i think it was just to prevent carl's patrons from oh, parking okay. on both sides of the fork <clears throat> and going to carl's and picking up an order and then leaving which would leave just a little bottleneck there um you would probably still want no parking on the one side so that the parking that's in those angled spots could back up. You know, it's, that's the only complication I see, but I know I spoke with our sanitation folks and they said that if, if this resident parked in the street or if somebody else parked, you know, along that Eastern side, that it wouldn't impact them. They could still pick up your trash and I can't speak for fire if they can get through, but you know, that would be the only other large vehicle I would think that would have a concern if you have too many cars on the street of that fork. Yeah, I could I just couldn't figure why as wide as this street is, we can't why we right have it's no restricted parking on both, on both sides. sides. Right. Correct. Um why it fell onto this table number three. If you go on the other side of Madge High School is even more narrow, but you can park on both sides mm -hmm. of that street. So yeah I thought you would limit it to the west side of the northbound fork up to you know pick a point you know that matches the rest of the code and then you could open it up on the east side either up to this address or you could go beyond that you, know, you could go all the way up to manage if you wanted to that way if you're a patron if they're losing parking you would hate for the business to lose business because if people have to walk too far away they're not going to go there the word does what needs what's the mechanics that needs to happen to get this on a different table and allow parking on one side of the street i guess is my question oh, i believe we can just rewrite this give it to the city attorney and then you know lay out the criteria mention that these changes are forthcoming and that we need to modify it and that then you would amend one table and then put no parking anytime you would revise the way it's written right now you know, we, we could wheel it off. We did that over on um, over by the um, Enterprise car. If that's uh, was that Moritz that we did it on, we modified it there. It was like no parking here at a corner, and it didn't exist before. And that was because the person that had the house next to Enterprise, when they back up, they couldn't see because there were cars parked there. So, is there such thing as resident parking only sign? There is, but I don't. There, there hasn't been in right. Many, I haven't seen a sticker years. in years. I think. Um, that used to be something the city would do, hmm. but in the 10 years I've been here, we've never issued it. Okay. And I know we're not in favor of permit parking. Right. But you know, I, I think it's important because oftentimes when these items come up, we do have the fire department go and mm -hmm. test to make sure that if their cars parked along there, they can still yeah. navigate. So I would encourage Chief Cottrell to confirm that before any change is made or as part of right. this change. Would the committee entertain directing staff to eliminating uh, parking on the east side of high school between Manchester and Madge? Allowing parking. Allowing parking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that'd be fine. Any motion? Is that just direction? Yeah. Just yeah. All in favor of that? Say aye. Sure. Aye. 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 everything you need from us then Dan? yes yeah i can take some sense. measurements and give it to chief and make sure that it fits for the uh bumper truck 
bring it back to the next How far up from the north part of this picture is Manch? Just a little bit, a couple of houses. Yeah. It's... Yeah, when I went out there, there were actually a couple other vehicles parked north of this gentleman's property that were parked illegally, but you know, maybe they were just running in for well, something. Well, that entire block can't park on the street. And Correct. the street's twice as wide as any street I think we have. <laughs> yeah, I personally didn't see why that was that big a deal. And it was during the middle of the day when Carl's was open and you know, maybe more people are just dashing in or having it delivered. Right. If Carl's is going to lose parking, let's ask that this be written to allow parking up to manage so that there are- That was my impression parking. that I would do. Yep. Do you feel need to notice the neighborhood of, of a change? No, because since nobody here seems to remember why, <laughs> you know, you don't, okay. Well, I noticed in the, I remember in the past, I think the church there, there were some people upset they would have things and it would spill over on the streets. I remember that, yeah. But that was, you know, once in a while. Right. Um, you know, on the west side of high school, you can't park at the first, it's the transition between the church and the first property. It's strange. It's, it's just very short right there. I think that was a purpose. I think there was complaints and that's why that went in. Yeah, and, and that one's even worse because the drivers are shorter. So if you have people over, where do they park? They have to park to the north. So. All right, thanks, Jane. Okay. Move on to item B, which is uh, Chief Cottrell. We've got an extension of an HVAC maintenance agreement. Correct. So uh, at the conclusion of this year, we will have um, completed the first three years of the contract with DECA service for HVAC services in our firehouse. We'd like to extend it for uh, one additional year. Does anybody want to um, bring forth a motion to extend the contract for one year with DECA for HVA maintenance? So moved. Second. Any other questions? Let's see. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. That, that'll that be posted on the November 15th uh, board meeting. Okay. Oh, do you need that in the form of resolution or does it? do we need to stipulate that? I'll have to. Uh, we'll get the resolution drafted next week. And, okay. uh, get it posted. Yeah. And then stick around because you've got hmm. a uh, reallocation of some funds for the lock uh, Knox boxes. Okay, so brief background on this 21 fiscal budget. Um, our capital improvement projects includes replacement of all of our personal protective equipment. All of it has been completed with the exception of our helmets. We ordered them uh, in April. We were originally given a delivery date of November. Now uh, we've been given a delivery date of next April. So we do not have our helmets. We are moving that into fiscal 22 um, budget request. We utilize those funds. It's about $20,000, $21,000. Uh, is the upgrade this Knox box program? Uh, we presented it as part of our ARPA funds uh, potential proposal uh, a few months ago. This is significant, in my opinion, due to the growth, especially with the schools and the addition to the new schools, switching to this system now and capturing as many new users as possible for electronic Knox box access. So th that is the proposal. Uh, we can outfit the entire department. Um, I'm pulling up the figure. Get 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, yeah, 14,272. And that that is for all of our equipment. Are these the boxes you also use for uh, residential use? Uh, it's the same key, the same manual key, yes, but a slightly different product that they offer, yes. And then if anybody's giving mutual aid, they have the same access from other departments? So with the electronic key, yes. With the traditional key, no, it has to be a Brentwood unit. Brentwood fire unit with a manual key. So for residences, those boxes would continue to have manual. Only. Correct. We will carry both forever. I mean, we'll, we'll always continue to have the manual key. Anybody want to make a motion to reallocate $14,272 of the capital funds to the Knox box products? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. 
Yeah, one more item, request to donate surplus fire department equipment. I do. So continuation of the PPE replacement. We are now at the end of life use for our gear that is greater than 10 years old. Uh, the state of Missouri fire marshal has a program in place. We can offer this to donation specifically to volunteer departments um, that does not otherwise have access to firefighting gear. Um, we can make the transfer um, through those avenues. We do disclose that this gear is beyond its useful life. Then I guess BOLA under under our purchasing code under transfers, this <clears throat> would fall in that category. Right, which is um, why we're presenting it to the committee for approval. And it'll ultimately be on, it will go to Ways and Means, which seems to be, but that's our process. And then it'll go to the Board of Aldermen. Okay, so, so we're we just- can do it. We're just putting our stamp of approval behind exactly. it for Ways and Means. Right. But entertain a motion to donate 25 coats, 26 pants, and 30 pairs of boots to, who's that going to, Chief? Uh, just the State Fire Marshal. State Fire Marshal. Anybody want to make that motion? Second. I, I, I just had a question. Is, is this a, a pretty common practice among fire departments? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, I've seen at least five um, notifications from the State Fire Marshal offering similar uh, donations this year yeah oh thank you okay no other questions all in favor say aye aye, aye. Any opposed okay thank you yeah. on the item e i think this is chief speech this is the uh panasonic software upgrade this be taken off the agenda right yeah, and, it's, and so we didn't want to amend the agenda prior to the meeting since we had already posted it. Yeah. So the request is to defer this to a future public safety committee meeting. Do you have a meeting in mind? I mean, if we table it, doesn't it go to the um, next meeting? We, we could say, well, is the November meeting going to happen? So we could say the December meeting. <laughs> December meeting. Yeah. December I, make, meeting. <laughs> I make a motion that uh, to topic 9E be tabled to the December meeting of the Public Safety Committee. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Right. We'll have a December meeting. What? That's a good point. Not, not necessarily. <laughs> Did well, the next item be, be postponed as well? Okay. Do you want to talk about the next item or should that be removed from the agenda? Uh, you talk about the Panasonic? No, the less so. Yeah, we could we could talk about that. Okay, perfect. All right. Go ahead, Chief. The second item on here under new business was the law enforcement support office programs offered by the federal government. We're asking consideration to enter into a contract with them, uh, with the uh, city of Brentwood. Uh, there are a lot of law enforcement agencies across the country that receive equipment, the surplus equipment from the federal government, um, things like weapons. Uh, so they have some uh, vehicles. Um, light trucks, things like that, that uh, equipment that comes available that we potentially could use. There is no cost to, to receive this. Uh, it's donated by the, the feds as part of the contract. The only cost to us would be to pick it up if we have to go somewhere to get it. Um, so we're asking consideration to enter into this program. The way this works is that they list all of the equipment and vehicles and weapons, anything they have on a website. And then you just go in and, and request it, uh, depending on your needs. It doesn't necessarily have to all be for the, for the police department. It could be used for other things as well. So for example, public works, we, we might target a vehicle for them if possible, if they need something. So it wouldn't just be the police department necessarily. Uh, it is for public safety, but uh, I think there's a strong argument in some of the things that Public Works does with with us, for example, it's it's a good fit. So uh, we're asking consideration to be able to just sign a contract with them to receive equipment and uh, some training events are included as well. Yeah, we would in your memo. I think you mentioned this. So the only other cost, other than the actual physical acquisition, would be insuring it. I suppose on the backside, yes, yeah. Obviously, you're not insuring weapons and things like that, but yeah, vehicles. But the vehicles, sure. yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all the question that. 
few years ago, there were photos of some absolutely terrifying vehicles that under this program were now in a city and the police was marching down the street with <clears> this, <throat> this enormous uh, tank-like vehicle. And there are other things than that that you're looking at. We won't be getting those. Those are more uh, SWAT team oriented uh, entry style vehicles and protective gear for uh, hostage situation stuff. Riot control. Um, and by entering in this contract, you, you're then able to make a determination weighing factors of travel insurance about whether you want the equipment. It's not like you have to take yes, it. You'll know going in and whether it's worth doing or not. So, I mean, following your capital five-year capital plan, for your department, I mean, this would just be another source of equipment. But, yeah, potentially, it could be yes. So, sure. And it changes frequently. I mean, it, every month they have new equipment that comes on there, and so there is a cost for the city that presently would not be in any budget. So, if they, the department, decides they want this particular vehicle, then we would call Slate and find out what well, what would it cost to insure this vehicle. Um, it should be minimal, but I don't know what kind of, you know, vehicles. You know. One of the things we were looking for was an ATV for the parks. Ah, uh, and okay. There, there has been uh, used ATVs used. on this. Okay. So that was Anything just, a, like just that. an example of something we, we might find. So, Paula, and, and anything like that would have to come to us for because of the additional costs associated with insuring the vehicle. Right. Well, yeah. because it's not in the budget. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll make a motion that um, that we uh, I, I, we're not really approving. Are we are we pr promoting this to the full board for consideration? You would be, and and I think in his memo um, he talks about you know because of the cost. I, I hope it is yeah. in there um, that there would be an additional flag th that we would be checking. It wouldn't just be automatic. Let's go get this vehicle or this equipment because there's cost associated with it. So I, I would make a motion that that uh, we recommend to the full board that uh, the city of Brentwood uh, um, enter into the law enforcement support office program. I move. Sorry, second. Whatever. Questions. In favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. All right. Move on to citizens' comment. Any citizens, Kelly? All right, I guess motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's Sudoku. <laughs>